Okay, guys, muss, uh, no muss, no fuss, let's get straight into the lesson. This is all about the musical alphabet. This is what you need to know to be able to navigate your way around the fretboard. In fact, you need to know it for music, full stop, because this is what all musicians use. Now, the alphabet letters that you see before you on this screen, they don't actually mean anything. This is the thing. They, they, they have no meaning whatsoever. Basically, all they are is labels to tell you uh, that what a pitch is, what the, uh, the highness or the lowness of a note is. Uh, and as you can see, what we've got, we're using the model that is available to us on the guitar, uh, which is the A string. Beautifully, it starts on A, um, which is very useful. Um, and this idea here carries throughout all of your uh, six guitar strings. Um, but here's the thing. Human beings love patterns. We love patterns. That's what we're always looking out for. We're always looking for patterns to make sense of things. Uh, that's uh, what everything is pretty much based on in life, patterns on patterns. Um, so if we look here, we can see we have this red circle here that denotes the A string tuner. Um, so we've got the machine head there. There's the A string tuner. And really, we want to think about the open string as the zero fret. I know here we have the first fret, uh, but behind the head note, we want to think of that as being the, the zero fret. If we think of it that way, then we won't get lost. That's just zero. Um, so, as you can see, this house here uh, is the A string, and that is the start of our musical alphabet. Now, the reason I use houses is because everybody lives somewhere and everybody lives on a street and this is why this is called alphabet street because it's going to help you to understand where you are um, because it's easier to go somewhere new from somewhere you already know take that in just listen to that yeah uh, because it's always easy to go from somewhere you know to somewhere new then let's start with somewhere familiar and this is a, a diagram of a street so this is looking at it a very linear method. Um, so what we could do is, if we do look at this here, we can see that we've got. If we look at this here, we can see we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you'll notice that the twelfth fret. What happens is we go back to A again. Now there's a reason why this this works this way is we have notes that go in between. We're not going to do those in this. Uh, uh, tutorial. What we will do is we'll do that li much later on. Uh, um, I, it's still part of the same thing and you'll get the gist of it uh, as we go along. But the thing to notice here are the patterns. If we look at the A, the house that is the A which is the zero fret behind the head note here, you'll see that the B and the C here if I can highlight that, no, that's not going to work. If we can, if we can see that the B and the C here, these guys are neighbours on the second and the third fret. That distance uh, between the second and the third fret, uh, coincidentally, is, is is known as a semitone, and it's a good thing to know as a guitarist about semitones and tones. They are the most basic units of moving around the fretboard. T semitones and tones. So you can see here that the relationship between B and C is that they are next door to each other. They are neighbours. Uh, as opposed to A to B, you can see there's actually a gap in between. Now, I'm not a fan of uh, um, having to think too much right when I want to uh, access music and I don't think you will be too really you know you want to you want to get to the results quickly so it makes sense there are notes that live in between here and some of you guys are gonna know those what those notes are but it doesn't make sense to process those as part of your thinking because what you essentially do is add steps to you finding the result and getting to the answer that you need uh, if you're trying to find the D here at the fifth fret, for instance, you don't want to be going A, figuring out what this first fret is, figuring out what the, the, the third fret is, what the uh, third fret is, the second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and then to get there. That's too many steps in the process. We want to eliminate steps in the process because they slow down your thinking. Too many steps, throw down, uh, 
uh, they foul your thinking, they, they make it inefficient. We want your thinking to be super efficient when it comes to learning the notes on the fretboard. Right, so B and C are next to each other. In between C and D, there is a gap. Just accept it. There's a gap. Yeah, so we're thinking about these notes. These are the natural notes. These are the white keys on a piano as well. A, B, C, D. We've got a gap. Then we get E and F next door to each other. That F is not going to highlight either. Um, so we have E, we have F, and you can see those are a semitone apart from each other. If we want to look about, look at that, if you think about one fret as being a semitone, uh, and semi meaning half, then if you take two halves, then you get a whole. So that would be a tone, a semitone. And a semitone equals a tone. That makes total sense. So if you get a semicircle and a semicircle, put them together, you get a circle. Um, so it's all very, very logical how you want to think about this. So E and F next door to each other. F and G, they are a tone apart. Um, in uh, um, uh, uh, the US, you like to call things steps and half steps. So if you want to think of it in that way, this probably makes sense, that, that B and C are a half step, and C and D are a step away. You could think of it that way. Um, I'm not a fan of that way. I'd rather think in uh, tones and semitones. Um, but some of the, uh, uh, the US naming systems are superior to the old school uh, 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 way of doing that. And then finally, we can see that here between G and A, we have a tone. Worth noting, if we look from 0 fret A to the A at the 12th fret, yeah, which has two double dots, I've got another video up there that explains the hidden geometry of the fretboard and why those double dots are there. That explains that you have hit an octave. Count up those notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, to an A. Yeah. If you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that gives you seven notes. If you add that other A, then that gives you eight notes. If you think of uh, an animal that lives in the sea with eight legs, yeah. Um, if you think of a shape with eight sides, what do you get? Yeah, so uh, the distance between two notes, A to A, is called an octave because of the oct. Worth noting, octaves are awesome. They are bookends that contain uh, uh, everything in between. We need to really understand octaves. There's some videos about octaves as well uh, in the playlist that, that, is, um, that this video is contained in. Um, so really, um, that's about all we, we need to kind of think about. L uh, let me just add, actually, just a thought. If we add... A to A being an octave, and this is a very linear method that I'm showing you here, guys. Very linear. If you want to think of it as a clock, <clears throat> what happens with the clock is it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then once it gets to 12, it goes back to 1. And that's exactly how the musical alphabet works as well. I'll, I'll do it this way. So it goes... A, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 jumps back to one. Musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, jumps back to A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, jumps back to A. And if you wanted to think about it from a context of pitch, if you could sing your lowest note or play the lowest note, it would go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, until only dogs can hear it. Right, so there's a linear way and a circular way of thinking about it. I'd be interested in uh, how you prefer to think about it, if you prefer to think about it in a linear fashion or a circular fashion. You know, it, it, how you think about it feels differently in, in, in your brain. How you think about linear versus circular, uh, you may have a preferential way of thinking about it. Uh, if, if you do have a linear or a circular way, Drop it in the comments and be fascinated to see uh, which way you think about it. Anyhow, guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Catch you on another one because we want you to be able to dominate that fretboard because if you can dominate the fretboard, you can play 
anything you want to play on the guitar, regardless of genre, regardless of uh, uh, style, chords, arpeggio scales. Understanding your fretboard is the key to freedom on your instrument. See you in the next tutorial.